All right. Good evening, friends. Stephen and Yana Benoon here on Israeli News Live, and we have Angelo and Veronica with us today. And I'm sure many of you guys already know who they are. Uh, they are well, very well known uh, in the music industry, their own channel here, uh, Angelo and Veronica. Uh, you can see here on their on their uh, YouTube page there a lot of amazing, amazing uh, songs Singing. that you can listen to yes. there. Uh, you know, we'll just click on one here. Uh, what, let's see, which church are you guys in here? Oh my gosh, that was uh, a long time ago with Colorado Mass Choir. Okay. And it's one of our most popular videos. Yeah, that was done in Colorado. In Colorado. So Colorado Mass Choir, a very <laughs> famous choir that invited us to sing on their, on their album. Right, right. Dad. I was pregnant at the time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, wow. How powerful. Who's that? <laughs> yeah, I just had our son. So this was um, 90, 97. 97. That wow. is. Wow. I just wow. had our first baby. So you, you guys are uh, worship leaders. You sing praises to God, to Jesus. And then you are invited to all these big churches all over the country. Were you ever outside the country? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Where did you... Germany, Africa. Amsterdam, Africa. Wow. Yes, you got Uganda, Africa. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, oh, shit. Uh, London, uh, England. England. That yeah. is so amazing. And yeah. Yeah, so why is it so, like why is it so special we have this beautiful couple here, Steve? Why is it so very special? I, I hope that people because can they have an see. amazing testimony to yes. go. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's guys, you know, not about us anyway. Well, you all have blown us you, away with your testimony. You, I have to tell you, the first time I heard a small clip, mm -hmm. uh, I saw you, Yana. It's just a small clip, part of a like a bigger video, and I was like oh my goodness, I need to hear this lady speak. And I found, and I finally found the long form of the video. And that's the first video I saw of the both of you on, uh, I think like True News. Okay. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. And yeah. I was just, oh my gosh, just blown away. And it was like, sort of all the pieces of the puzzle came together. So let's just, let's just so tell much. people. I love the video. Okay, so we are having this wonderful couple here, Steve. They are so famous. They sing praises to Jesus. They're worship leaders. They're invited to these huge churches. And I'm talking about Paula White, right? Paula White uh, Church. Oh, boy. And, uh, some other names. Can you just throw at me some names? Of yeah. These oh, yeah. We, we, we sang at Paula White's church back in the 90s. I want to say around the late. 90s yeah. and um or middle 90s uh, we've been with kenneth copeland we've been with creflo dollar Hello, we've Roberts. been with td jakes mm -hmm. uh kenneth hagan senior and junior uh, Fred Price. i've been saying at lakewood with joe osteen in their spanish service fred price uh fred price jesse duplantis jesse duplantis TV? yes oh my favorite so, television network well, tbn tbn so we um when we first signed our our uh, uh, Christian record deal in 91, mm -hmm. our first album came out in 1992 called Higher Place. And uh, we we were signed with one of the booking, biggest booking agencies in the world, in the world yeah, William they, Morris what, Agency. Whitney Houston and all those people. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it was the Word of Faith churches mostly that came and and asked us to sing. And we didn't even know. We didn't know where to fake. We didn't well, know their beliefs or their let, let me go <laughs> back a little yeah. bit. You know, before we even signed a deal, we sang in nightclubs. Mm -hmm. Even though I claimed to be a Christian. But uh I remember, you know, we had a boat, you know, we had, and the, and when you're playing nightclubs as a as a local musician, there's usually an, a booking agent that books you in different venues, different nightclubs. So when, when I signed the record contract, I was confused. I'm like, wait a minute, why do I need a booking agent to sing in church? 
it was completely, it, 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 it blew my mind because I couldn't understand that. I go, they go, well, it's business. I go, business? What are you talking about? I, we were just completely, we were completely yeah, why it's unaware. So similar. <laughs> why it was so, and then to find out most of these pastors and churches we went to was like being in a nightclub. Because the pastor was just like the club owner, dressed nice hair and nice suits and nice shoes and Mercedes Benz. You know, <laughs> meanwhile, I'm driving a Pinto, you know, go get where. And it's like, <laughs> I mean, the, the, oh the ridiculousness God. of yeah. that whole industry called church yes. is such a mockery to God. Yes. And it's so frustrating to us. That's why today we're in our home and I'll stay in my home and I have a job and I'll keep my job until the Lord does what he wants to do with us because we do not want to be part of this world system in the corporate world, corporate church of America, which is a 501c3 church controlled by money, not by the, by the power of the Lord, not by his truth, not by the word of God, but by, by what, what motivates us as humans is getting stuff, getting things. We know we have to, you know, and the, the word completely defines who we are. We're not defined by the things that we possess. Okay. God doesn't look at us and go, oh, you know, there are there's superstars, or they got a car, they, they have a home. There are people starving on the streets of America. And we have the audacity to go out there and, and rob people of their money like these word of faith preachers. They, they preach taking people's money, the tithes, which puts people completely under the law. Okay, but the very laws that they, they themselves don't even obey, the 613 laws, then in the Mosaic laws for the Israelites. Right, which was for the Israelites. Right, and which one do they obey? The Levites. Yeah. Tithes. They don't obey the 612 other ones. Because when you confront the pastors, they get all mumbles. Yeah. They get all scared. And I'm like, and that's what I love about y'all, you guys, the boldness that God has given you in this season, in this time, to speak the truth, and especially what's going on in our world in Israel. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was overwhelmed by your video. Seriously. Well, thank you and so by, much. By your boldness for the truth. Mm -hmm that you stand for righteousness, that you make this place that that's called the Bible, which is the gospel that came to save the world. And, and nobody preaches it. Nobody's not, not that, that we know of the, the churches that we went to. They certainly did not stand against sin and iniquity. You know, they were about confirming it, affirming it, and believing it that so that they can get more members in, yeah, not disciples, but right. members, because well, it's all about membership. And again, these 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 temples made about money. with man's yeah. hands, okay, with human hands. No, yes. we don't yeah. need to be in those buildings. And the Catholics were the first ones to really implicate. I mean, uh, put put that into place with the temples. All across America. I mean, you're talking millions and millions of dollars in church buildings, again, made with human hands. Because it's a business, brother. It's a business. You yeah. know? And, and inside of those buildings, they teach a certain kind of approved gospel, which uh, last hundred years, and a little over a hundred years, is a dispensational Schofield theology. Wow. And wow. of course, Steve yeah. and I, we've been all in this. We we we've been in the in the shoes of of dispensational Christians because we wow. were Zionists with our heart and mind. I mean, with everything, we were for Israel. We would do anything for Israel. Ask anything. We had unconditional wow. stand uh, with Israel, no matter what Israel does, no matter what Israel says. They Israel could do no wrong, and it took a wow. holy. Spirit, it took Holy Spirit, and it was in the land of Israel when we started to see a little signs, we started to see mm. little things and start putting it together, and our hearts started to 
you know, talk to us. Uh, and then we had these private conversations. I said, Steve, something is not right. Like, I am very worried. And imagine we had all these ministry and we were with with all these pastors like Pastor Paul Begley. We would meet in Israel with all these big ministries. And Steve would go into Knesset to meet Yehuda Glick, the Knesset members who mm. are hooking up with these Christian pastors. Wow. And they're asking for support of the state of Israel. And Christian pastors are giving all of their flock to, to the hands of Jews. And they're, buy into it. Wow. You know, and they're telling them to support uh, everything Israel does, right? Huh. But right now, what I want to say, Steve, we got this special couple. They don't even know how special they are. You see how, how humble they are? <laughs> I mean, we are having musicians here that sing to Christ from all of their heart because they have such love for Jesus. And they are invited to all these churches. They're mega big churches. And they go there and provide these services for worship. And you, Veronica, write me and you say, we didn't even know we supported Zionism, but you were not <laughs> even aware, right? I didn't even know what Zionism That's right. was. Right. Well, I didn't, right. Neither of us even knew the, the true definition, really, mm -hmm. of what Zionism is. And so when I saw you all, uh, mm -hmm. you know, go from, you know, telling your testimony of Zionism to true Christianity, I was like, oh my gosh, we were a part of this as well. And mm -hmm. we didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. You know? So is this just recent for you? It just, just happened for you just now? Yeah. yeah. A few weeks I, back? Yeah, I saw your videos maybe maybe about six months ago. And one a part of a video, I love looking through the lens, which now I can see you. Praise God. <laughs> you guys look beautiful. But oh. no, but it's like, but it's like. Which she said, you, you, we're looking through different lenses, right? That was so, that was so good. Yeah, but we came, so good. We came away from uh, the Word of Faith movement um, in 2015. God had put it in our hearts to start, you know, just our small little ministry. He just here in our home, mm -hmm. and um, it was like, oh my goodness, when God just showed us this, it was like because something was like felt not right for a long time. Yeah in our ministry, we were, you know, singing our songs and recording we, albums we and, traveling, figure it out. and traveling the world, but something was just, I don't know, just not right. It was like- We would spirit. leave empty. We would leave confused these places that we were at. We were like, what is it? Why, yeah, why, it was why like were we here? All the focus on money and materialism- and, and entertainment. And entertainment. <laughs> and just this, this worldliness that Unfortunately, That's all, not of, all of the modern church has now. And it was like just something, just something was not right. And but we didn't know how to get out. We couldn't just easily get out of our record contracts. We couldn't right. easily just get we out of into you it. know, walking away. We were earning a living this way, you know, mm -hmm. traveling and singing in churches. But in 2015, I remember praying a prayer based on uh John 16 about the spirit of truth. I said, Lord. I mean, I was just, oh, I just remember I was walking outside. I was at, I was running and and I just remember praying this very fervent prayer. And I said, Lord, please, I need your truth. I said, I need the truth. Whatever it is, I don't care what it is. I need the truth because I need to be yeah. made free. It's the yeah. truth that makes us free. And that time on, and that was only a few months before we started Higher Place Church, and God just, oh my goodness, dropped it on us. And we were just blown away. We're like, oh my gosh, we have to come away from word of faith. We have to come away from the music industry. We have to come, we have to come away from the world because God chose us out of the world. That's what the church is. And we had, we realized we had to turn our backs on a lot of things. Mm -hmm and walk away mm -hmm. and it was like once and it was hard it was a hard decision for me it was it was really like i had to really think about it. you have to count the cost right yes, you do. but i yes, thought about it and i was like noah i want to go all the way with god i want to go all the way with jesus and so once i did that it was like this heavy <laughs> heavy burden lifted off my life wow. and i was and i was free 
And I was free. And that was the thing that I was looking for, to be free in Christ Jesus. And that's exactly what <clears throat> false doctrines such as word of faith, such as Zionism, seeks to do, seeks to put you back into bondage yes. and, and steal your liberty in Christ Jesus. And we can never let go of that because that's the thing that is most precious to us as believers, our freedom in Christ Jesus. Yeah, and, and really our music, for example, which I never really understood the music industry that we were involved with, that was such a divide in culture. You know, mm. I mean, I'm a Caucasian, I'm an Italian Caucasian, she's Puerto Rican. So we're an interracial And here we company. are singing in, in all mostly, black churches. Mostly no, it was all black, black churches. churches. Which, you know? Which they, they were, the people were wonderful. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yes. And this, the, the, my, my, I thought I, yeah. I cry and I weep for those who are in those churches today because they don't understand what they're under. They don't understand what they're being controlled by. They don't understand that they're being manipulated and almost groomed, if you will, yeah. Yeah. by yeah. these false teachers that the Bible talks about continually that we just read the word. You'll say, oh, wolf in sheep clothing. Oh, beware of this. I mean, Jesus warned us over and over and over, and we as believers, nah, I'm not my pastor. I love my church. I love my pastor. Oh, really? Well, you need to ask him. See, in, the, in these churches that we went to, you couldn't confront these pastors. You couldn't go up to, to uh, yeah, you Kenneth Copeland. Speak to some of I them. Going up there. You can speak to some of them. When I first met Kenneth Copeland, we were in an elevator, and I went to hug him because he was on our record label. So I said, I'll just give him a hug, a brotherly hug, right? Right. He went. Are you was, kidding me? He wouldn't I, hug I'm you back? You the truth. And I'm like, look, brother. <laughs> well, I guess we ain't brothers. Okay. Okay. And right. and, right. and this guy was absolutely evil from the get-go. Arrogant. I mean, the, the, the false humility that's on that man. And I cannot believe that people would go and sit under those teachings of lies they're yes. being lied to, and they're being robbed, just like Ezekiel said. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm 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 just for dishonest gain for yeah. dishonest gain to steal to rob your soul and get your money, and I'm going to tell you we we witnessed it, we experienced it over and over. And let me tell you something: there were some people that we really loved. Yeah, yeah, we loved well. like we Fred still, Price, for still example. Love the people. I yeah, love Fred love. Price as a man, as a person. I mean, these people were kind to us they weren't mean to us okay now did they want something from us probably you know and they paid for it and we received it okay so that's what god would say to us but we were also we were ignorant we were ignorant to the things that were that we were involved with yeah. unknowingly. unknowingly and what happens is we can't use ignorance as an excuse when we stand before god we can't because well, I didn't know. You, you didn't know, Angelo, because you didn't read my word. That's why you didn't know. And that, right, and that's what we we started to do. We're like, yeah. you know what? We're going to read Passion. the Bible for ourselves. for ourselves. Instead of getting it secondhand information, mm -hmm. we're going to read the Bible for ourselves. Like and that's what opens your eyes. Yeah, that's yeah. what opens your eyes. And that's the cure. I can't believe that... Kenneth Copeland wouldn't hug you. So what we will do when we are meet, when we meet, because you only live like an hour and a half from us. I didn't know that. That's wonderful. So when we meet, praise God, we're gonna hug you guys. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Thank right? you. We're gonna hug them. You know I can't what? believe this. We, what you're I'm telling. gonna tell you something. We're excited for relationships because we have not met people in ministry that we connect with because we're called the judges. Every, every, because I've confronted all these famous gospel artists yeah. myself personally. I've been on the phone. Veronica's been on the phone. We've, I've texted this one guy for three years, and they call Veronica, Angela, and Veronica judges. Well, you're judging everybody. You're, you're, you're. You. I'm like, no, I'm loving you. I'm yeah. telling you the truth. Get out. Get away from this thing. And this one guy said to me, "It's my job." I go, well, the gifts and jobs are irrevocable and won't reproach. 
or is it the calling? What is it a calling or is it a job? Which one is it? It's a job, he said. Hmm. A job? And this is a person who I listened to his music and God used that music to reach me. Yeah. So he will use the foolish things to confound the wise. God yeah. is an awesome God. Even through through somebody else's mess, he can he can use them anyway. And I believe him with us. He used us even through our ignorance. Mm -hmm. Somehow people got touched. Yeah. yeah. You know, but um, but that's not an excuse not to repent. We had to repent mm -hmm. for everything yeah, and that's, we were and ever that's, involved. And you know what? That is something that we never heard, unfortunately, nope. in the Word of Faith movement. We never heard about repentance. Mm -mm. How can people repent if they're not told they need to repent of their sins? You know, this is, that's huge. That's huge. And I, that one error yeah. is can can dismantle somebody's faith. Yeah, you know, I told Veronica, I said, now it's funny because repentance is now being squeaked out from these guys. Like, wait a minute, now you're talking about repentance? But they really don't talk about it. They just mention it. Like it's like in passing, when Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand, repent for the kingdom of God. Is at I mean, come on. I mean, this is coming out of your Savior's mouth, what we need to do, and I don't hear it? You're not telling me? So, but I mean, go back to you guys, Steve. What you guys done in Israel is unbelievable. I mean, what you've experienced. And, and you really blessed us, you know, and thank you again for your truth that, that, that God spoke through you and showed you yeah. what the truth was yeah. so that you can free others. That's what this is all about, right. helping others come to that understanding that we need to get out of this Zionism. Yes. I mean, we even went to a church called Mount mm -hmm. Zion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? it's a very popular church here for the blacks. Right. And yeah. It's all about Zionism. Yeah. Yeah. Is it all about Israel? Yeah. Well, you know, 99% of Christians in this country are Zionists. That's because uh, when they were setting up seminaries early 20th century, they have put the Schofield Bibles there as their guide, and it was done by design. And they were, wow. nobody knows about this. Nobody knows about this history that they were some pastors and preachers that were against it. And they're warning the flock at the time that they're bringing in this new, new theology with a totally different lenses, right? Like here, That's this good. is the like Zion, Zionistic lens, dispensational, and this is the <laughs> different lens so which which lens are you gonna put on and it's so sneaky and so yeah. and it tricks you because they explain certain bible passages with the lens of zionists and schofield and what it does it tricks these people because it looks like truth right unless you really look into it like for example like i want to talk to you about what do you feel of what's going on in middle east right now like right now what's happening is that israel, it's rude. It's rude. the state of israel <laughs> is build, building their jewish kingdom their earthly kingdom yeah. they're expanding yeah. and they're, they're they're taking land and they're building it on blood of the innocents children so, yeah. so what do you what do you think about what's happening in israel right now yeah well the Bible says what well, Jesus was a Jew, right? And the Jews are the chosen people, right? But I tell people all the time, why would, okay, if they're the chosen people, you think Jesus is coming back for the sinners? He already did what he, what was the cross for? You just dismantled the cross by saying, not just because you're Jew doesn't mean you're saved. Doesn't mean you're saved because if you're iniquity, if you're living in sin, you're not saved. So how, I don't care what I don't care what culture you are, black, white, green, blue, pink, Italian, French, doesn't yeah. matter. If you're living sin, a sinful life, right? God is not, you know, right? When when you when you all go, uh, brought this information, and now it's like now it's our responsibility to bring this information to somebody else because we totally agree with you all, hundred percent. Um, 
But the Lord told, told me this as I was working on uh, the message and talking about you all mm -hmm. and, and your testimony and everything, which was so exciting to me. Um, the, the Lord told me this, here, here is the test. If somebody is chosen, the Bible says, uh, uh, you did, uh, I did not, you did not choose me, but I choose you, chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Mm. So the test of being yeah. chosen yeah, not bomb, baby. is coming yeah. to the Lord, coming to Christ, getting connected to the vine, right? Becoming that branch that's connected to the vine and bearing fruit. Yeah. That's the test of being chosen. Yes. You know? And again, and again, what's happening in our nation with politics, you know, I hear you know, every, all the Christians, so so called Christians, vote for Trump, right? Uh -huh. And I'm like, from we've been to the White House, so I, I saw how they how the Democrats and the Republicans interact with each other. They're friends. They're not enemies. That's right. Americans are dumb. Mm -hmm. They just they, they just whatever you tell them, they'll 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 bite it. Give me give me you know give me McDonald's, I'll take it. You know whatever it is, and it's like. Wait a minute. Like Donald Trump, he said, he made a statement. He said, I will stop the war in um, 24 or 48 hours, something like that. No, yeah. well, no, talk about the other war again, with Russia. Ukraine. Oh, yeah, Ukraine. Yeah, the Ukraine war. Right. He said, I will stop that war before I even get into, into the White House. Well, wait a minute. What's stopping you now? Why don't you stop the war now? You're so you're so powerful. Stop it now. Yeah. Right. But be a person of your word. Okay. And but then but then again, I know who his spiritual advisor is. Yeah. Paul White. Exactly. Exactly. You're listening to her? An adulterer? I mean, I, I, really? I mean, this this woman is horrible. Sorry. Sorry, Paula. You know, you know what? You can repent too, and you can stop right. your foolishness. That's right. Okay, and and it's like and pr promoting thing, Judaism. The, the thing that I came away with, listening to you all, is that being pro-Israel, which we didn't even understand that that was that's what Zionism is, right? And supporting them no matter what. But the thing that we understand now that I understand, it's like being Zionist is also being. Uh, pro war, you know? Yes. It's like, no way. No way. I am not going to support that. I'm going to be for the defense of women and innocent children, you know, for the, their lives. And yes. I'm not going to support that whole thing. No way. And what's crazy is we have Jewish friends. I mean, I did. Right. And I love the Jewish people. Right. This is not against the Jewish people. Okay. No. It's, I mean, they're being lied to. Yes. yes, the propaganda that's going on that they they have to buy into. They, they, a lot of them is out of their control. They they can't control what's going on. It's the the powers to be, okay. And I believe, you know, because I'm a sensationalist, you know, and a, a conspiracy theorist, that <laughs> that the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, you know, one like my father told me he's Italian. He was when he was living. He said. Whoever has cash is king, son. Mm. Yeah. They're the kings, and they rule the world. Yeah. So what happens is they play little games with people. And I believe that the Freemasons are part of all this. Yes, That's my belief. Yeah. You cannot believe yeah. it. And if you don't yeah, know what Freemasonry is, go things, look it up. That's one of the things that we found out when we walked away from Word of Faith music, music and, the, and the music industry, that everyone seem to be a part of these social networks, mm. the fraternities, the sororities, mm -hmm. and also Freemasonry. The reason yep. we know that is because we asked them. We yep. asked a lot of them and some of them actually admitted to this. Okay, and, so and they, let, me, let me ask you this, Veronica. You're saying that the pastors are Freemasons. Is that what well, you're Well, I'll tell you this, in the music industry, the music industry in particular, almost every successful Christian artist is a part of fraternities, sororities, or and 
Freemasonry. That is. Let, let me share something, something with you guys. I'm sorry, it's it's true. Yeah. Yeah. We, and, we've been we've been looking at we, this for ten years now and observing the patterns and the um the the you'll common know them, denominators. You will know them by their fruits. And you will, and ultimately, you will know them by their fruits. And you'll know yes. them by their signs and their symbols, and their hand signals, and their and people go, oh, that's just silly little stuff. Yeah, and some no, of them, not. and some of them openly admit it. Yeah, like like Amy Grant and Vince Gill, for example. He's a, he's a, um, mm -hmm. and so Freemasonry, we know, cause we studied a little bit about it is, uh, Freemasonry is Judaism for Gentiles. Yes. Yes. That's, That's right. We, we can have another show on going deeply into that. Yeah. Like, for like example, example, PBN. Say something, Steve. I'm sorry, Steve. Uh, yeah, I, I used to expose that years ago a lot on the Freemasonry and it's been a while since I've done that. Uh, but one thing I'll share with you guys that since you guys have come on, it really made me think of this. Back in 1978, my sister, she, her and her boyfriend were going to a concert in Mobile, Alabama. It was Boston, uh, mm -hmm. the rock group Boston. Mm -hmm. oh. I was brought up in a family that was not Christians at all. So I went with her. And at the time, I was just getting into reading the Bible and stuff, and I was the only one in my family like that. So I went with them to this concert, and when I get in there, we go up into the balcony, we're sitting there, you know, and they're doing their rock and roll thing there. And suddenly something happens to me, and I feel like I was pulled from my body, literally from my body, and I was pulled like almost up into the rafters. Mm. And a voice spoke to me and said, look around. And then I'm looking all around at everybody, and it's almost like the sound was muted, all, not completely, but close. And the voice then asked me, what do you see? And then I came back to my body, and I thought it was so strange. Now, years later, a few years later, I was in a Pentecostal church. A friend of mine, she takes me there, and we're sitting there, and we're up under the balcony area. And I hear the same voice say, look around you, and what do you see? And then the voice said to me, what you see, or no, let's see, he said, the music is the same, only the words have changed. Wow. Mm. Wow. That's exactly that, right. You nailed it. So, that's, okay. exactly, because it that's exactly Because right. the music, the genre it carries you, the same spirit. Yeah, well, it's the genre which pulls people in. Right. What, in other words, because yeah. it's very music is very subjective. What what you think is great, this person thinks is horrible. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the way it is. You know. And here we that that's yeah. I mean, that's it's really a difference fun. when people sing from their heart, like what you guys have done. No matter where you sung, you sung from your heart. Yes. And that's what Christ is looking for. He's looking for the person that serves from their heart. Yes. Amen. So it didn't matter what church you went to. Yeah. But, the, but what I saw and what I learned from this when I was a young man is that the spirit of the church itself had become no different than the spirit of that rock and roll band of Boston. The world. That's exactly right. And, you and that's what we try to explain to people about the gospel music industry and Christian music industry. Right. That there is no difference. Wow. There is no difference. And you really need to look a little bit closer to the music that you're listening to because music has great, great power. And it is a very spiritual experience. Yeah. Because uh, it talks about in the Old Testament about uh, the distressing spirit that came to King Saul. And then they brought in David, who was a skillful player. Mm -hmm. And that, and David, when he played the harp, he made that evil spirit go. So music, anointed music can make evil spirits go. But the opposite is also true. Demonic, satanic music can yeah. also make evil spirits come into your life. Yes. That's what that would mean. That's why That's Kenneth Copeland power. wouldn't hug you, Brother Angelo. <laughs> He was making that evil spirit go. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you know, you. right, right. The other night, we have a new song on our new album. 
called Praise Him. And it's an acapella song, just me and my wife singing, no music. And we're in the in the room, and our cat is on the bed in the studio. And you know, she's just resting her head on the bed. Yeah. My wife lifts up her hands. I came in and I was like, I was like just praising the Lord. Just praising the Lord. You know, the music mixing. was wanting, you know, was like making me, you know, worship God. And I was looking up and I was uh lifting up my hands, and our cat. She Eva looked up. Looked up. And she looked up and she didn't go like this. She, she didn't go like this, then go like this. No, she looked up and she was staring she at something. She saw something. She saw something. And it was like for five minutes. Yeah. And she, she went and we were calling and her. She, was she, looking at, she kept her eyes fixated on something that was in that room. Wow. That's she a, saw something that we could not that see. That we couldn't see. When we were praising God. And I've never experienced yeah. that ever. That but is it was like something. I'm like, thank you, Lord. Yeah. So in other words. We don't have to be in a church. I don't have to be in a church building, which I don't believe in anyway. Okay. We could be outside walking, just me, my wife and I, you, you and your wife could be walking and, and the Lord is with you. Yes. He's with you. So in other words, we've become, a, we've become accustomed to being alone because of where we stand with our belief in the word of God, in his truth, and that God you know, is, is really just speaking to us like he's speaking to you, Steve. Yeah. Okay. And, and Yana, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I, I'm excited that, you know, that, uh, that God is going to be doing some, again, one of my prayers that I've asked the Lord for is that Lord expose the, those things that are in darkness and bring them yes. to light yes. and in, in our industry. Yeah. And Diddy came along. And everything is going to break loose. God's going to expose T.D. Jakes, Lecrae, these so-called Christians, 37 ministers that went to his parties. These, and I'm not talking about the world. I'm not talking about the Jennifer Lopez's and the, the, and the Diddy's. No, God's going to expose his people. Yes. Or quote unquote yeah. his people. Judgment starts in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Right. And these people are the ones that are gonna be, that are gonna have to fall on their face before God. Yeah. And that's why I asked the Lord. The Lord expose these people for who they really right. are. The Zionist that yeah. that T D Jakes is and a Freemason that he is. Okay. And that so that they can repent. And we know yeah. him. In fact, we were asked to sing on his album. Was it last year? Yeah, a few, few years back. Yeah. We his e-church. Yeah. We were asked to lead worship, and we said no. No, it's not going to happen. In other words, I'll do my little job for the rest of my life before I compromise the gospel. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I'm seeing more power in what I'm doing in my little job at Amazon yeah. than mm -hmm. I ever did in ministry. Yeah, and I, we feel like we're we're now. It's like the creativity is even more. Yeah, I'm still you know, we're making writing, music. We're still making music, even though you know we're doing it on our own independently. Um, it's like we're finally writing the songs that Great. we want to write, and we're yeah. Now when we sing, is there's a certain freedom and conviction. Yeah, and conviction that we couldn't have before. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because once we need to, people need to watch watch you and sign up to your uh, subscribe to your YouTube because now you're doing these songs with pure heart. I mean, you always had Amen. pure heart, but I Amen. you're not under control now, like with yeah. this business business like um, like when you went to Paula White Church, for example. I just want to ask that did you did she hand you some sort of a paperwork and anything like that? Well, we had to sign some things, but I didn't think anything of it at the time, you know, because again, it's all about business. Hmm. Right. It has nothing it's... to do with ministry. Right. But they, and they would always give cash. But when I had to sign my name, I don't know what I was signing. Right. That's how smart and I that's was. That's how we knew know Jennifer Mellon. Right. Jennifer Mellon through, right. through Paula White. Yeah. yeah. So what, and, what do you think about Paula White making a yeah. statement? that oh. uh, Christians, uh, that the Jews do not need to know Christianity to be saved, but the Christians need to learn Judaism. We need to learn Judaism. So, I, you know and, what? And, yes, and Judaism, yeah. so people know, Judaism, 
um, is not really uh, the Old Testament. Uh, that's not really yeah. called Judaism because when you hear the word Judaism, you must think of Talmud, Zohar, Kabbalah. This is the definition of right. Judaism. Okay, so they they are looking at the Old Testament through the lens of um talmud they have a talmudic interpretations and that's called judaism so whoever made up this term which is a very new term judeo-christian that's oxymoron it doesn't work yes it's either christian or judaic it doesn't right. really work so right. um so paula white when when she said that christians need to learn judaism they're not to preach jesus to jews at all uh, but they need to learn from the Jews. W what is your opinion on that? Oh. Well, if you look at like, look yeah. at, let's look at TBN. TBN has a network in Israel. Yes. How do they have a, how do they have a network, a Christian network in Israel? Right. When you cannot preach the gospel to Jews. Right. To Israel. What, right. Because you're a free Mason. That's why. <laughs> Because when we went there, be the point. Yeah. every time we went to TBN, I'd say to my wife, what is, what's with this gothic chairs? I feel like I'm, where's, where's, you know, where's a, I'm looking for all the, oh, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. it's, it's just like these big gothic looking Freemasonry chairs. And that's exactly yeah. what it is. Freemasonry. But I want to answer Yana's question oh, yeah. about Paula White and Judaism. Um. I I agree with her in the way that yes, you should look into what Judaism is. Right. What really is. Yeah, but not what you, you know, not, right, but not what she, what she means by it. Right. That you should learn from it, no. but you should learn about it. Right. I think that's incredibly important, you know, um the information that you you all right. have brought about actually reading the Talmud, actually reading about what this is all about. And that this is something that you need to run from. Yes. <laughs> that you need yes. to do the opposite. Exactly. You know, the one of the one of the most uh, uh, oh, um, eye-opening uh, books of the Bible to me is Galatians, because yes. Apostle Paul talks mm -hmm. about his conversion and how he came away from the Jews' religion, and in other uh, versions of the Bible, it says Judaism. Mm -hmm. And see why he came away from that, you know, because he was, again, he was made free in Christ Jesus and you don't want to go back to being the key. in bondage, you know, and, and, and at the end of Galatians, he says, he said, uh, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. So don't let anybody ever put me under the law. I don't care if it's my brother, you, you know, mm -hmm. my Jewish brothers whoever, whoever well, I'm not, I'm going to be, I'm going to stay free in Christ Jesus. And so when uh, Paula White says that, it's like they're trying to put you under the law again and under bondage, because that is, that is a heavy burden. You yeah. know, that is a heavy burden that uh, Gentiles and even Jews are not supposed to be under. So when she says that, it's like, what, and then when she says about not preaching the gospel, there right there should be a real red flag. It's like, wait a minute, where is she coming from that we cannot preach the gospel to uh, to the Jews? This is that's crazy. See, that's exactly what they need is the gospel of Jesus Christ, so they can also be free. And if you want to know who somebody is, Jan and Steve, look at their association. Mm -hmm. She's very tight with T.D. Jakes, okay. the Word of Faith movement. And she's preached and, and spoken to probably all the same Black churches that we went to because the Black culture supports them mm -hmm. because they're under Zionism. Okay, that was being taught, even though they don't understand it. There's things that there's being spoken that these poor people don't even know what they're under. You know, and that's why we that's came, right. when we came out, especially what, what you guys brought, is eye-opening. It's life-changing. Life It'll change your life. What you guys are doing is life-changing. And, and you need to go viral. 
it, it needs, I mean, you know, people talk about going viral. It's like, no, why don't we hear this? Please give us this so that we can be made free from that. Yes. Well, you, you are another couple who are passionate and you need to go viral as well now with your testimony and you coming out of that Amen. and as you said that you didn't even know or realize that you or what zionism even is so right we knew what zionism is and we supported it so imagine that right and we had to repent mm -hmm. it and we, we made so many videos repenting i mean we are openly saying that our biggest regret is that when we lived in in the state of israel when we were there so much that we wow. just not go see our palestinian brothers and sisters wow. and we just didn't you know we were around all of these uh rabbis and uh we were christians we love jesus but yet it's just it was it was it's that's how powerful brainwashing can get it's and think about this yana tbn they have right values all the time on there. Yes. So um, this is the thing. We need to come together. Whoever Amen. has a, uh, we all have different gifts of the spirit. Correct. Right. They're, they're, we are all different. Look, you you are musicians. I'm a classical pianist, but I'm not a singer. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I can play. You can play the piano Chopin, over here for it. Right. I can play Chopin, Beethoven. But, wow. but I admire you, you together are beautiful and you have such powerful gift from the Lord. And, and now you are in ministry by yourself and then you, you, you have a testimony, right? So we need to come together and we need to be teaching in these times, the church, because this is a time of war. We are in a spiritual oh, yeah. war. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yes. Look what is happening. I am, right. I am afraid. I'm afraid this is happening with such a speed right now that they are forming a Jewish kingdom that's false. And all of these hordes of Christians are being tricked through these Freemason pastors as you are exposing them now. You're exposing all of this. Amen. So Steve, don't, don't you think we need to be so powerful right now, almost every day, have some sort of a word for people and share it and share it and share it to come out of Zionism, come out of guilt of blood in the name of God. They use name of God and then they, uh, right. have, blood, they have a blood guilt because they use God to excuse their killings of innocent. And, you know, somebody said, oh, these are Muslims. I don't care what they are. I, I, I am, we are not called to kill Muslims. We are called to preach to Muslims. Come on, okay. kill Muslims. that's exactly right. Yeah. Yes. You know, those, every single Muslim, every single yeah. Jew, every single person that's, that's there is a, is a potential person who will come out to Christ. So come we are on. not, we are come not on. called to kill. We are called to come preach. on the kingdom. And, and, you know, so yeah. all these Christians I'm hearing pastors say, Oh, the, the Israel go and kill them all. And, and you know, what are, what kind of Christianity now, is that? Yeah, exactly. ask you a question, Cause you've been to Israel. Then do, did you, did, were you born in Israel, Steve? No. Okay. I used to live there back in 2004. Yes. Now, he went to a, a, a suicide bombing and all of that. So, but you know, the region, right? Yes. Very well. If you look at the region, because I've looked at it. All the nations around Israel are encompassing them. And they're going to tick them off at some point. It's going to stop. And they're all going to be elite. And America's got their hands in some of these nations. But like Iran is a big player. you got all these nations around it. It's very dangerous. Well, that's what Jesus said that that uh it's going to be in jerusalem is going to be encircled it would be desolate encompassed with armies yeah. one day yeah. and then the desolation is near you know so, so they better be very careful see the thing is israel's got america on their side that's why the church 
And so for Israel, they're pro-Israel. I mean, I mean, we're pro-life. Right. We're pro-human beings. Second time we hear this today. Yeah. We're pro-life. Anti-war, <laughs> yes. That's yeah. right. And the only war that we should be fighting is spiritual. Exactly. Yeah. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. you know, but against principalities and powers. Yeah. That's the fight that we're in, the, or the, the, the wrestling, you know, spiritual wrestling. But, yeah. you, but you understand what I'm saying, Steve? Yes. Yeah, and it's, if, if I was in Israel, I'd be, I'd be afraid. Well, you know, the Jesus, he, I think he said it best uh, when he said, when, if, if the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the pit. And he said about the Pharisees that they were blind. And then you go to Revelation about Laodicea, which is the church. And he mm -hmm. said, they're blind, naked, and don't even know it. Wow. So yep. you have the blind, and now they're calling on. Christians need to learn. We have something to learn from the Jewish rabbis. All right? Now, look. Wow, spent, what a lie. I spent many years in an Orthodox organization. Uh, now, I never was Orthodox personally. I do have family members that were. Uh, in fact, one of them, he was a Chabad Orthodox Jew, wore the full black garb, everything. He came wow. out just from listening to my ministry. Is he that his city? And, uh, and, you know, so the thing is. But he came out to Jesus. Yeah, he came out to Jesus, you mm -hmm. know, because that's wow. the if you want to do something to help the Jewish people, you got to lead them to Jesus Christ because you're not helping them by saying, Oh, you have Jehovah and we got Jesus. Hallelujah. We we have a two we have a two uh, I don't know, two, two different brides, gospels. Two, two, we have two yeah, bride right. doctrine there, right? right? That's a big wow. nonsense, you know, this wow. two doctrine. That's Perry Stone, by the way, the two bride doctrine. Oh my I don't gosh. know if you know. Oh. Right. Yeah. Oh. They, yeah. they believe that Jesus is the is the husband to the to, to Christians, to the church, church and, 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 and God is the husband to Israel. So I said one day when I first heard this doctrine, I was writing in the first book I wrote, I said, well, that's kind of interesting. I said, well, I guess I'll have to stone Jesus then because, you know, he did <laughs> the father's wife, right? Because wow. the first part of the church were all Jews. So, wow. Yeah. So yeah, it's always one God, right? We we are, it's one God. That's we have one God, but it's only one church. So Israel is a <laughs> spiritual meaning. In the New Testament, we have to take yes. another lens, and it's through the New Covenant. Yes, the New Covenant, yes. lens, right? That's so, right. The lamb's the lamb's wife in Revelations is is New Jerusalem, the holy yes. Jerusalem. That comes down from heaven, you know. Yes, yes, yes. that's the only Jerusalem, and the the earthly Jerusalem does not have a good name in the Book of Revelation. So, uh, we are to look uh, to earthly Jerusalem. Yes, and uh, it's always the Hebrews. The read Hebrews. The Book of Hebrews is oh. our testament. That's what. That's what we as, need to look as at. As the scripture says, they tried to get in some, you know, when they were there at the marriage supper, they, so there were some there without the wedding garment. And they said, well, how did you get in? Well, they climbed up some other way. Yeah. Mm. They try to climb up the other way, all get thrown out. So I don't want to get thrown out. I want to go through the way of Jesus Christ. Who, Amen. That's right. Repenting and yes. accepting yes. his grace. That's the way I want to go. It's only through no Jesus way. that we can get to God the Father. That's yes. right. He's the only way. He's the only way. I mean, and I, what I love is I said, Jesus was the only man that ever claimed to be who he said he is and was and always will be. And the only way to the Father is through him. That's right. Paula didn't say it. Buddha didn't say it. But Jesus said it. That's right. Okay. And, 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 and he is the truth. He is the truth. The truth. That's right. Yes, so it's, it's, it, it, we're, we're, but we're excited. Where you 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 yeah, really you brought have, a truth. You to all us. have inspired us so much, and you, oh, you gave, have no me, idea. gave us so much courage. You know to uh, to again just you know uh, give this message that you all have given us, and it's our responsibility to pass on the information. You know, and like I told Veronica, I said, you know, we, you know, preaching this message 
will come. I mean, there's a lot of angry people. And a lot of Christians would come against us in a major way. They say, oh, you're anti-Semitic and, you know, they're, they're this and that. Really? So you, so I'd rather be anti-Semitic than be anti-Christ. Yes, amen. amen. That's a very good. That's Which a, one do you want to choose? Yeah. See, because right. I tell people all the time, Paul walked away from his culture. But these black folks, they don't want to walk away from their culture. Everything is about their culture. And I said, well, let your culture save you. Because they won't. Mm -hmm. They want you to be under, under the law. They yeah, want you tricking, to be under they're control. They're tricking these people. They're tricking them. And they yeah. are walking them into a trap. So we have, a, yes. we have a lot of work to do. Do you agree? We have a lot of work to do right now. So if you have a ministry... YouTube ministry or or at home from a church that you give teachings when you you have your understanding through the new covenant lenses. I mean, covenant it's just like you have yeah. so different lenses you can look at, but it's only about Jesus. He's everything and all. He's the only <laughs> summary of entire Bible and prophecy. Right. It's it. Yes. That's no. Uh, uh, that's the only way, right? Yes. So, uh, we need to walk away from supporting what's happening right now in middle east yeah we have to voice that we are for life of jews and muslims and anybody over there involved and we can only give them a word of gospel and life and hope in christ yeah. and that's all we can do but do not call right. for war because you will have blood guilt on you that's but right the blood is on our hands yeah, it will be. And yeah. whatever people sow, they shall reap. So I'm very worried about this nation that if we get involved in these wars and we like what's happening there, it's really awful. And if you want to know what's happening, go to ifamericansnew.org or look at uh, uh, these IDF soldiers in the state of Israel who served their country. Uh, they are giving testimonies. And they are telling people, a lot of them came out of IDF and they are telling the truth. And the name of organization is Breaking the Silence. Wow. Breaking the Silence. Look wow. that up and listen to some of these soldiers, what they're saying, that they were participating in occupying and truly uh, killing Palestinians. Steve, tell like at the end, like because we're gonna end this now for the sake of time, but we're gonna, we we are gonna get together. We Amen. are gonna make a difference. We're gonna Amen. start educating everybody. Okay. I just wanna, I wanna, I just wanna say this because you, uh, you all brought, uh, suggested pe some people to listen to, you know, to get both sides of the story. You know, yes. how can we make a choice if we don't have both sides of the story, right? Right. And you suggested um, listening uh, to Gideon Levy. Yes. So I listened please. to Gideon Levy. Yes. yes. And then I also listened to another man. I want to say his name is Richard Forer or something like that. And he uh -huh. was pro, uh, he was part of APAC. Okay. And now he's pro Palestinian. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That we had he that said on one our... thing. He said one thing that really, really stayed with me. He, read, he went to the funeral of uh, a little boy, like a 13-year-old boy. Oh. He went to the funeral, uh, a pa Palestinian. <laughs> and he said, so when he, when he left the, the service, a woman came up to him and said, said, do you sleep with your shoes on? Wow. Wow. Do you sleep with your shoes on? Yeah. And he knew he understood what she meant. Yeah. Yes. That they there can't even rest, not a moment's rest, because they could be bombed. Yes. They have to be ready to run out of their yeah. their house or wherever they're living. Yeah. And I was like, I can't imagine oh, imagine living like that. Veronica, it's not no. only that they can be bombed, but what these IDF soldiers are saying is that 
they, they, let's say they're you know the in, in a time's past now gaza is gone by the way it's it's gone off the map it's they they genocide oh. these people i mean that they, they're they are taking over territory but uh these people would live day and night day and night in a knowing that idf soldiers like a nazi party would come to their house at any time and they usually like to come at two three o'clock in the morning in those hours they would come uh, raid the house wake up the family all the children and then they would take them to you know station by by the with the jeep and just harass them that's why they they always you know didn't even have a night these people are traumatized people mm -hmm. It was an yeah. open air prison yeah. in Gaza. Gaza was an open air prison. It's okay, fear. Wow. It's, it's unbelievable what these occupiers, what state of Israel is guilty of. And I really suggest. Let me let me give you a few names, and I will tell you that it's always. I, I don't know why that is, but and I'm not speaking about Gentiles and Jews as two different because it's it's you know I don't care about separation of humanity to Jews and Gentiles, but it's always some sort of a Jewish person that comes out and tells the truth, hmm. and who it is like Gideon Levy, Gideon Levy. Listen to journalists out of Israel who is speaking the truth. Okay, he has to have special protection just to go to store wow. for groceries because he's persecuted by his own government but he speaks the truth he will tell you the truth another one look up miko peled we actually interviewed him about three years ago miko m-i-k-o last name p is a peter e-l-e-d miko peled another jewish author jewish activist who is telling you the truth because wow. his, his parents came to Israel uh, when they were forming the state of Israel in 1948, and they told him the truth of what happened at that time. Okay, so listen to his story, and you're going to be amazed how lied we were. You know, they are lying to us. Yeah. Uh, another author is Israel Shahak. I highly recommend all of his books that he wrote because he told such truth about Judaism and a state of Israel that when you read that book, you're going to be shocked. And he wrote about two or three books. His name is Israel Shahak, and he was a professor at a uh, university in Jerusalem. He was a chemistry professor, but um, he just decided to translate into English some of the writings of Rabbi Schneerson because Rabbi Schneerson would write only in Hebrew. So that way Gentiles do not know what they're writing. Uh, but he actually translated, he's responsible for translation some of that stuff. Oh, himself, okay. So that way he can, you know, he showed the Gentiles what what are they uh, writing about, about them, about the Gentiles, What what is their uh, plan. So I highly recommend that start right there to educate yourself. If people can hear that as well, I always recommended that. And um, and then, like you said, Veronica, don't look at only one side of the story. Look at both. Yeah. Be a, yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. let's be in a courtroom here. Okay, let's you be the judge and hear both sides of the story and after you really listen to both sides, both sides. this is when you decide based yeah. on your own conscience which way you're gonna go that's right so that's basically what our message is yes and we're very excited that you you are a very special couple you have such um gift from the lord to influence others toward truth and i believe that he's right raising you right now Hallelujah. do that job mm -hmm. so um we wish blessings well, a lot of, a lot of people have heard you over the years so they know you from all walks of life they'll still come to listen to things that uh that you're doing and so now that's why i believe you've been put in that position down through the years 
Now you have a greater impact because you have a wide audience. And now that God has given you the ability to speak the things you're speaking, now you will reach people in the, no doubt, maybe even in the millions. So th there's a reason why we go on the road we go on. And yes. uh, it's only after we go on that road that we begin to realize this is the reason we are where we are. Now we can be a voice for what the truth is. You see, sometimes we say, oh, well, you, we repented. That's true. But, you know, the, the thing is, why were we so blind? Well, the Lord had us there well, for a reason. Yeah. Lord had you there for yeah. a reason. So you know the subject so well that when you came out and he made you see, right? Like I was blind, but now I see. Now we can speak with authority and we can say, no, we know the subject. We know what they're teaching. We know what they're doing. Yeah. And we can tell you the truth now because we were there. We were there. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's how you have to look at it. Repent, but then go to work. Go to work for God, for Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, Thank and, you. And, and this Thank is our you. wish with Steve for you, Veronica and Angelo. You have beautiful gift, and I, I think that you prophesied over them now because they're gonna have millions of viewers, and they're gonna influence lives toward Christ. So wonderful! Thank you so much. We, we, we believe that God is gonna do what He's gonna do. We're here to just, you know what? I love our Savior. He didn't come to be served, but He served His life as a ransom for many. Yeah. Yeah. For the ones, the people that we speak out against or for these churches and these church people. And it's, again, they're members. They're not disciples. See, and my thing is Jesus didn't come for members. He came for disciples. And that these disciples are going to be taken away if they don't open their eyes to the truth. And if we speak one thing that will take them out of that ditch, like you said, Steve. Yeah. The blind lead the blind. Blind exactly. leading the blind. It's, right. really, it's the truth. Yeah. And if we can reach our arms down there and say, come on, yeah. brother and sister, come out of that, yeah. come out. And how we need to have the courage to, to lead people, also have the courage to speak up for the truth. The same way, uh, Yana, the people that you were mentioning about the Jews who have come to the truth and are, yeah. are speaking the truth, if they yeah. have the courage to if do they that, have the courage. how much more should we as believers who have the Holy Ghost and boldness how much more should we have courage to speak out and um, gather people up and, and tell them the truth? And I'm excited to have two new friends. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. we are, we are yes. friends. Yes. You know me, I can't even believe you're so close. This is definitely- You, you didn't really uh, realize we were here in Nashville, huh? <laughs> you know, maybe maybe Veronica told me and I just kind of passed through, you know, because I have did, so did my ex, Did my accent tell you where I'm from? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are originally, we lived in Florida, so accent here, I still didn't pick up that accent, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Steve, Steve can do this accent very well. Yeah. <laughs> so when you cook, it's, guys come through, yeah, yep. we definitely want to get together. Absolutely. Yeah. No, well, I have you on my phone, so we will be in touch. Share with me how you. they can get in touch with you guys that would like to be listening, that are listening now, how they can reach out to you, learn more about your ministry, et cetera. What would they need to do to be able to do that? Oh, sure. They can go to, well, our website is angeloandveronica.com, angeloandveronica.com. And we're also Thank on you. Facebook. We're on Facebook and all the social media. Uh, oh, yeah. And they can get our music on Spotify, on iTunes. And Apple, mm -hmm. iTunes. So, Amazon. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Amazon. And your YouTube channel? Well, we're going to put all this. Angelo is Angelo and Veronica. Okay. Well, higher place church, yeah. right? Yes. Yes. And they can, right. And they can, on our YouTube channel, they can see our, our messages that we do here on Sunday. Excellent. Or higher place. Yeah. Thank we'll, you for we'll load that in the description for everyone to be able to to be able to check out uh, the work that they're doing, the amazing work they're doing there. And uh, so we're going to close for now. You guys hang on, though, if you can, just for a second here. But God bless you. And thank you so much for joining us here today uh, with Angela and Veronica.